occurrence of cancer is growing day by day. A prediction based report shows that in last decade, there is a 45% increase in cancer cases. Now, in this video, we would talk about the causes of cancer. Now, definitely you know that there are carcinogens and there are cancer causing agents such as cigarette smoke, etc. But apart from that, there is another important cause of cancer, which is genetic. Now, this genetic cause of cancer is due to gene mutations. Now, which genes are mutated? In this context, I'll introduce the concept of proto-oncogene and oncogene. Now, any cell need to grow and in order to grow, they need to divide and increase their number and also their size. So, there are a set of genes known as proto-oncogenes which aid in this process. So, simply, proto-oncogenes are those genes which are absolutely necessary for normal cell growth, proliferation and division. There are other type of genes known as tumor suppressor genes. Tumor suppressor genes, as the name suggests, they suppress the tumor growth or they suppress the uncontrolled proliferation or growth of the cells. Now, due to some reason, if there is a mutation in either of these oncogene or the tumor suppressor gene, then the consequence could be detrimental. A gain of function mutation in the proto oncogene would convert it into oncogene, whereas a loss of function mutation in the tumor suppressor gene can reduce its ability to suppress the tumor or uncontrolled growth. As a result, what would happen is uncontrolled growth. When cell division is uncontrolled, it might ultimately lead to tumor formation and which might turn into cancer. Now, let's just look at cellular at a cellular level how these proto-oncogenes could be a component of growth signaling pathway now as i depicted earlier that proto-oncogenes are absolutely necessary for growth division and survival so definitely anything any component of the growth signaling pathway which endogenously give rise to growth of cells or tissue if it goes wrong then it might create a cancer like situation so these mutations or these changes could occur at the ligand level such that the growth factor level the growth factor binding receptor level the intracellular signal transduction molecular level or even at the very downstream the transcription factor level so i'll discuss discuss and describe all of the examples one by one so stay tuned the first step is the receptor where the ligand binds you can imagine if then any mutation cause a overproduction of any growth factor or a mitogenic signal that might lead to cancer like situations other than that receptors which are receptors for growth factors such that human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 or HER2 acquires a mutation in its valine chain in its valine residue and convert it into glutamine residue. As a result, the receptor is locked in an active conformation. It is autophosphorylated without the binding of any ligand. And as a result, the downstream signal is always active. This HER2 new protein is known as an oncoprotein and one of the prevalent cause of breast cancer. Another example is EGF receptor which is turned into a truncated ERBB oncoprotein which is also constitutively active and doesn't need any binding of ligand to signal downstream. It always signal downstream in a constitutive fashion. Now, one of the most important pathways for normal growth and proliferation is MAP kinase pathway. In the MAP kinase pathway, the mitogen, which is a growth factor, binds to its receptor. Many of the cases, the receptor is receptor tyrosine kinase. And in this pathway, one GTPase is very important, which is RAS. Unlike, uh, just like its uh, cousins in G protein coupled signaling pathway, RAS also need GTP for its function. But this GTP, the GTP bound RAS could also be converted into an inactive state by a gap protein which is gtps activator protein and as a result 
just like the signaling could be switched on the signaling could be also switched off but there are many many mutations in the ras which makes ras an oncoprotein because in a mutated RAS, it is always bound to GTP. Even if the gap protein is able to bind to the RAS GTP, it cannot hydrolyze the GTP. And as a consequence, RAS is always active, constitutively active, and the downstream signaling pathway is always on, regardless how much signal is present in the environment or how much growth factor is present in the environment. As a consequence, there is a huge amount of output in the MAP kinase signaling pathway. Since MAP kinase signaling pathway is one of the key prevalent growth signaling pathway, which one of the important target of MAP kinase signaling pathway is cyclin D. And we all know that cyclin D CDK4 complex allow the transition from G1 to S phase. So any aberrant mutation in this MAP kinase pathway components or cyclin D, etc., can lead to uncontrolled proliferation and growth which might lead to cancer. So these genes, which are a normal component of the growth signaling pathway, or which regulate cell cycle progression, regulate survival, these genes are proto-oncogene. But any loss of function or any gain of function mutation in them would allow them to be converted into an oncogene or an active oncogene, which might give rise to uncontrolled proliferation and cancer. Now, mutation in several transcription factor can also lead to cancer. And a live example is FOS. Another thing is, many cases, mutations might stabilize the mRNA. Namely, the FOS mRNA is normally degraded at a stable rate, at a steady state rate. But the overproduction of the FOS would happen or the stabilization of the uh, FOS could happen due to some mutation in its mRNA. As a result, the output of the, the uh, MAPK pathway would be huge. So there is a huge amount of MAPK pathway output. As a result, there could be uncontrolled growth and risk of cancer. Now, chromosome translocation at a big picture can give rise to cancer. You might wonder how. So let's say I give you a specific example. So here is a chromosome where a gene known as CMYK marked in red is situated. Now the CMYK, due to translocation, change its position. CMYK, which was earlier located in this small yellow chromosome, now get incorporated near vicinity of a gene IGH, which ultimately cause Burkitt's lymphoma. Now this kind of situation happens because the IGH is highly, highly expressive gene in these cells and when CMYK comes under its influence of this enhancer it causes a huge production of CMYK which might ultimately give rise to cancer. Many of the cancers are associated with this kind of chromosomal inversions in chromosomal translocations such as Burkitt lymphoma, diffusive large B cell lymphoma, follicular lymphoma, and mantle cell lymphoma all these things happens all, all 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 of these cases a normal gene which is regulating growth is coming the coming into the influence of a gene which is highly highly expressed and as a result those genes which are giving rise to normal growth is excessively produced and as a consequence it is giving rise to uncontrolled growth and thereby cancer now i'll take you through some other aspects of it Normally, a cell has programmed its own death pathway using several specific enzymes known as caspase, which are in inactive form normally. But when a signal related to a death cue appears, these caspases are cleaved. One such kind of death cue could be a damage in the DNA. So all these things would lead to apoptosis by activation of the caspase 3. Now, there are specific genes which are pro-apoptotic, helps in apoptosis, and thereby regulate the homeostasis of cellular proliferation by maintaining a proper turnover of a cell. Now, what happens in case of many cancers, these pro-apoptotic genes are suppressed, whereas the 
anti apoptotic genes such as BCL2 and BCL XL, etc., are overproduced or upregulated. As a result, cell never dies. Literally, the cell would become immortal and show uncontrolled growth and other tumor cell like phenotypes. Now, apart from all of these, we know that every day, uh, we know that a cell could ultimately uh, lead to cancer when it is more stabilized and the proapoptotic genes are down regulated. Now, our cells has DNA inside their nucleus and DNA is undergoing damage every time, let's say by some UV radiation or anything. But there are mechanisms which can first of all detect the damage and second of all there are maintenance mechanism which can repair this DNA damage. But imagine a situation where there is a mutation itself in the DNA repair machinery or the damage dis detection system which might not uh, detect this kind of mistakes and overlook this kind of mistakes. As a result, there would be overall more mutations and as a result, there is a high probability that these proto-oncogenes would be activated in form of a oncogene and that might lead to uncontrolled growth and cancer. So that was my whole video on proto-oncogene. I hope this video was informative. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.